She is thought to be the most powerful destroyer built in India. And tomorrow when the destroyer Kochi becomes INS Kochi when she is commissioned into the Indian Navy, she will bring with it a set of capabilities unmatched in the waters of the Indian Ocean. I was on board the Kochi and have this report. When this ship is commissioned into the Indian Navy tomorrow, she'll bring more firepower, a greater range of operations, and more versatility than most warships of her class anywhere in the world. Built at the cost of 3,900 crores at the Mazgao Docks Limited, Kochi is designed to defend an Indian fleet with state-of-the-art surface-to-air missiles being co-developed with Israel, air defense guns, and Brahmos anti-shipping missiles some of the most potent naval weapon systems anywhere. It is one of the most potent ships that we have ever built. Secondly, it has got a lot of uh, Indian content and uh, it has got a capability that uh, gives us uh, an extra reach, it gives us an extra punch at sea. Unlike Indian warships of the past, the Kochi is entirely automated. This is her machine control room where among other functions, officers monitor her Indian built power generators which churn out 5,600 kilowatts, enough power to run a small town. Machinery, auxiliary machinery control system, other than main propulsion system, all other engineering equipments can be monitored, controlled and monitored from here. Various systems like power generation, compressors, AC plants, all the systems we have, uh, we can mon control and monitor from this point. Commanded by a 46-year-old captain, Kochi embarks 390 officers and men all trained to access the ship data network, the backbone of what is an information highway on board the ship. At every uh, terminal where, wherever required, whether it's in the bridge or in the operations room or in the machinery control room, there is complete information about the ship's functioning and the equipment at a single point. And uh, that is exactly uh, what, when I say a high degree of uh, automation and sophistication has been achieved. On her mast lies this the Israeli-made multifunction surveillance and threat alert radar, or MF Star. Unlike older radars, the radar has no moving parts and is capable of detecting incoming missiles and aircraft several hundred kilometers away from the ship. Installing this massive system in India required millimeter-perfect precision. The Israelis are not very confident whether we will be able to do it indigenously. When we did it, they were surprised. And then they said, why don't we do this job even for coaching shipyard where Victanti is being made. The induction of the Kochi into the Indian Navy gives the Navy a capability that it's been seeking for a long time. Quite besides the fact that this is a warship that combines sensors and weapons from several countries is this. All of it has been integrated over here in India and all of it put together gives the Indian Navy the ability to strike hard where it wants, when it wants. In Mumbai, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. It's not often that navies induct warships and when they do, it is a big event. For the Indian Navy, the induction of the Kolkata class destroyers represents a significant step up in their capabilities. And now with the induction of the second in the class of uh, ships, that is the INS Kochi, the Indian Navy gets a significant amount of punch in its capabilities. Joining us now to tell us a little bit more about why this is a very significant induction into the naval fleet, uh, the Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral R.K. Dhawan. Thanks, sir, very much for being with us. Uh, you were just mentioning that INS Delhi was uh, a ship that you've served in in the past. Uh, we've had two Delhis in the past, the old Delhi, uh, then we've had a guided missile destroyer, the Delhi, and now we've got the follow-up of the Delhi class and the Kochi is the second of the three ships. How is she a step up from what we've had in the past? Well, first I'd like to say that the Delhi itself has been a pioneer. She was called the Grand Old Lady because the old Delhi was a cruiser with six-inch guns and I had the privilege of serving on that. First as a cadet where I got my telescope, which is for standing all around first, and then as a training officer. Later, I commanded the New Delhi, which is a missile destroyer. But this ship, INS Kochi, which we are inducting today, actually would make every Indian proud because it has been designed by Indian naval designers 
and built by our own shipyard, the Mazgan Docks Limited. It is a significant step up in terms of multifunctional radars, in terms of long-range missiles, and the machinery and the equipment that goes on it. Something else which I found very interesting, um, the commanding officer of the Kochi is only 46 years old. Um, a 46 year old being given charge of 390 men on a 7,500 ton destroyer that represents the finest that we've built in this country so far. That's an awesome responsibility, but young leadership is what the forces and certainly the Navy is all about. That is true, and actually for the Navy, the designation of captain is a time-tested tradition because he is one man when he's out at sea with his unit, that is the ship, he has to take decisions on his own. So we choose our best and the brightest for these kind of jobs. And as you rightly said, it's our endeavor to keep the service young by giving them added responsibility at a young age. Um, Admiral, uh, at this stage we see an increased presence of the Chinese Navy in our waters. Um, they've got their own guided missile destroyers, uh, which are also stealth ships, they claim. How does the addition of a platform like the Kochi enable us to counter uh, a presence in our waters which, may, which could potentially be detrimental to our interests? Well, the uh, aspect is that the Indian Navy has to have an operational footprint which spans across the ocean. In this year itself, the footprint of the Indian Navy has gone as far east as the Western Pacific, as far west as the North Atlantic, as far south as the islands in the Indian Ocean, including Australia. So it's our endeavor to have our ships showing the flag and showing the presence in the oceans of the world, at the same time shaping a favorable maritime environment in the Indian Ocean region. All right, Admiral, thank you very much for speaking to us, the Chief of Naval Staff. They're explaining to us uh, the context of, of the Kochi being inducted into Indian Naval Service, uh, additional reach, uh, additional presence, and fitting into an overall design of the Indian Armed Forces along the lines of what the government wants in friendly visits across our area of interest.